Let's talk about nine camera settings I change with any single camera. And it doesn't really matter the brand you're using, what sort of camera you're using. Those settings are generic settings and should be available within your camera. Some of the older cameras still have some of those settings available, so you might want to check your menu. So without further saying, let's get more out of our camera. Let's dive into it. The first setting should be probably the most obvious and it's about your image quality you can get out of your camera. You can shoot either JPEG or RAW. It's also slightly depending on how many SD card slots you got available with your camera. If you got two SD card slots available, then I recommend to shoot at least to one SD card RAW and to the other JPEGs. So you got both versions available and got the most flexibility later when you want to do some photo editing and have a RAW file available. If you're shooting a camera with only one SD card slot, then I still recommend shooting RAW and JPEG at the same time. So you got a JPEG file you can use straight away if you wanted to or you got a raw file for your editing later in post. The second setting is down to your shutter type. As an example with the Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV you need to decide if you want to use the electronical shutter or the mechanical shutter. With the, within a Fujifilm system you actually can choose both at the same time and the camera decides which shutter type to use. If you're shooting up to one four thousandths of a second the camera usually uses is a mechanical shutter and everything what goes above one four thousandths of a second within the Fujifilm system will be the electronical shutter. So having the option of choosing both at the same time is definitely handy and you don't need to swap all the time the menu around and search for your menu or change your shutter type within a menu. Obviously, if you're having the choice between mechanical shutter and electronic shutter, there are pros and disadvantages to both of them. I personally like to shoot a mechanical shutter. This is just personal preference, but the electronic shutter offers you faster shutter speeds as in general speaking. But also the electronic shutter can interfere with certain light frequencies in certain situations. So keep this in mind as well. The next setting would be the autofocus setting. Sensitivity. I like to play around with my autofocus sensitivity a bit because I do like a bit faster, snappier autofocus. However, it depends again on what sort of type of photography you're doing. Are you shooting a lot of sport, action related stuff? Then you probably want to play around with the higher settings of your autofocus to have a more snappy, accurate autofocus setup. However, if you're shooting something slower or something where a lot of people are running through the lens and you focus focus in the back on a subject then you might want to choose a slower autofocus so the autofocus doesn't always need to hunt as soon as something crosses your lens and it sticks on your subject in the back. The next three settings are basically down to the handling of the camera and relate to your display of your camera. I personally like to switch on the rules of third or the grid which will be displayed on your display. This will help you to create better framing for your photographs. This will help you to compose your picture better. You got basically a grid which breaks down your display into nine cubes or even 24 cubes if you wanted to. This is purely done for the framing of the photographs and will help you to get a better composition within your picture. The next setting still counts for your display and that are the zebra settings. And when I'm talking about the animal, we're talking about the black and white lines. You can see running through your display when you have this set switched on. This is basically a warning signal for you that you are about to blow out your highlights which you can't recover anymore. But also the Zebra settings are customizable and you could customize them for skin tones or any other situations. So definitely handy having the Zebras on. They can be quite confusing at the beginning because you see black and white lines running through your display when taking a photograph but you will be on a safe side to never blow out highlights again. So the next two settings we're gonna put in one setting together more or less because they do affect the same idea we want to achieve. It's about battery life and how we can save a bit of battery life and there are different ways how to do so. If you got a camera which is Bluetooth capable, can create a Wi-Fi connection 
or does the beep tone is still switched on, make sure all those settings are switched off. If you don't need them in this moment, there's no point having a Wi-Fi connection on, having your Bluetooth running in the background. All those settings will suck on a battery and will drain your battery even further. If you go to airplane mode, switch the airplane mode on and it will automatically switches or cuts off all existing Bluetooth Wi-Fi connections and it will save you a bit of battery. There are another two ways how you can save a bit of battery life with your mirrorless camera if you want to. First of all you go to auto sleep function. So basically your camera falls asleep after an X amount of time and wakes up with hitting a shutter button once. This can be shortened on time or extended on time depending on your situation you're shooting at. Let's say you don't shoot much in a moment, you can shorten this time and your camera falls asleep after two minutes, a minute, or depending on your camera brand you're using. If you're shooting a lot and you want your camera to fall asleep a bit later to save some battery, you can extend this time to five minutes, 10 minutes. Again, it's depending on your camera brand you're using. This is a way how you can save a bit of battery life for your camera as well, but you also can adjust the brightness of your display. This can cause a bit of irritation when shooting outdoors, in my personal experience at least. If the display is too dark, you might get a bit confused and think your picture is underexposed. If your display is too bright, you might think your picture is overexposed. So adjusting the brightness of a display can save you some battery as well. However, it can cause also some irritation at the beginning. And the last setting is basically shoot without a lens. This comes very handy if you're connecting a camera without any sort of electrical connection between your lens and your camera. This counts for vintage lenses or manual lenses. Having this setting already switched on, you never need to worry about it. If you come down to the point where you want to use a vintage lens on your camera and your shutter doesn't close to take a photograph. It's just a simple setting to switch on at the very first beginning to make it easier later in the process if you decide to connect any sort of vintage lenses or manual lenses without any sort of electrical connection to your camera body. And with that said, those are my 10 settings I switch on with any camera or change with any camera to get more out of my camera. Those settings, they did work for me quite well and I hope some of those settings will work for you as well. And with that said, like, comment, subscribe to all the good stuff, my friend. And if you got any further questions, any tips, any settings you think which should be switched on, let me know down in the comments. And with that said, I'm going to see you in the next one, my friend. Take care.